One night, I was falling asleep doing my homework and some questions came to my mind. Why do we naturally feel sleepy at night? Why are some people night owls and others are early larks? What would I be? Over the weekend, I decided to Google some facts on this topic, but I came across so much information and it was so interesting that it grew bigger than life and turned into a whole research. I'm sure you have wondered if you're an early bird or a night owl trying to understand your sleep requirements. Essentially, an early bird is someone who wakes up early, has the highest performance level before afternoon and feels sleepy at around 10 p.m. On the other hand, a night owl is someone who is at the peak of performance before afternoon and um, feels exhausted in morning classes. Let's find out who you are. Each of you can find two cards under your chairs or... Yeah. Could you please raise the one that you think better represents you? <laughs> so, now I see that the majority of you are night owls. Well, actually, I'm very sorry guys, but scientists have confirmed that there are no birds among us and we are all the same. Simply ruled by biological clock. Biological clock is a timing device in our body we are born with, which uh, controls all of the processes in our body. The idea of a biological clock may sound like a metaphor or even like a complete nonsense, but actually there is a distinct brain region with a tricky name, suprachiasmatic nucleus, which responds to light and darkness in the natural environment, as you can see in the picture here. So, um, this biological clock is controlled by three main factors, environment, genes and hormones. And this is how it works. When our brain registers that it's getting dark outside, it responds by producing more melatonin, a hormone which makes us feel sleepy. However, when the sun rises, the level of melatonin goes down and the brain's awake circuit get activated. When people or animals lack the genes that control their sleep-wake cycles or their hormones are not balanced, their sleep-wake cycles can be completely messed up. Another interesting thing when it comes to sleep is sleep schedules or sleep patterns, which we choose to stick to depending on our schedule. Nowadays, monophasic pattern when we sleep from 7 to 9 hours per night is the most common pattern. Most of us sleep like this, right? Okay, um, raise your hands if you don't. So, practically, I see that everyone sleeps just one time per day. But that is not the only way you can sleep. There is another common pattern, siesta sleep. It's when you have a short nap in the middle of the afternoon, but still sleep most of the time at night. Interestingly, it's considered to be healthier than monophasic sleep. It's very common in some European countries and all over Latin America. So, can you imagine, if you're ready for shopping, walking down the street of a small Spanish town, you might be in for some surprise, because all of the shops are closed in the middle of the day, because sales assistants are quietly napping at home. So, uh, there are some strange ones, back to the sleep pattern, uh, there are some strange ones, segmented and every man's sleep. It's when you have, uh, it's when you break your sleep down into more segments. In fact, these two patterns, segmented and every man, are very healthy. So, as you might have noticed, all these patterns that are considered to be healthier than monophasic sleep include a nap. Why? Because they include a nap. <laughs> Regarding sleep, most people know that adequate sleep helps to increase attention, improve learning, uh, decrease stress level, but there is one more function. I personally was so surprised to find out that sleep is the only, the only type of all our activities
is that has an incredible restorative function for the mind. Sleep also plays an essential role in the consolidation of memory and growth of tissues and bones. So that's the reason why children and teenagers should sleep much more than adults. So um, now that we have clarified that sleep is so important for our proper functioning, let's talk about sleep hygiene. If you want to have a relaxing sleep that would enhance your performance level the next day, you need to make sure that nothing prevents you from having a deep sleep. Comfortable mattress and pillows, as well as a cool temperature from 19 to 22 degrees Celsius are very beneficial. While bright light from phones, lamps and TV screens will disrupt your biological clock. Besides creating the right atmosphere, it's also useful to um, drink some herbal tea or hot milk while caffeinated drinks uh, like tea and coffee can make it difficult to fall asleep. Your evening meal shouldn't be too light or too heavy and you should have it from two to three hours before bedtime. Moreover, oversleeping is not good for you. It leaves you feeling sluggish and unrefreshed the next day and it can even cause a depression, so it's better not to oversleep. Seeing how many high school students in our school suffer from sleep deprivation, I decided to make a survey which would reveal if the students in our school are aware of the relationship between sleep and proper functioning. So as you may see from the diagram, only 33% of our students are aware of this relationship, which could be seen as a problem, considering that sleep is so important for our health and well-being. Most of the mistakes were made in such questions as how many hours of sleep should a teenager get per night, or um, there were multiple choice questions in the survey, and also about the effect of oversleeping and about the perfect time of nap. So you may see that uh, the majority of students made mistakes in this, I would say, basic question, right? So to my mind, Raising the students' awareness of sleep hygiene and sleep patterns will increase individual performance and quality of life. So let's sleep right. Thank you.